Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, for this topic, we're going to be talking about um, how uh, High Sierra is going to be the only uh, operating system that will currently support 32-bit applications. Now, once their next major update, probably sometime this fall, it's going to stop supporting 32-bit applications and they all have to be moved over to 64. Now, um, they are going to come up with an update here very shortly, which is a uh, 10.13.4 um, that will give you a warning message uh, if you open up an app that shows that it's 32-bit. Uh, so that kind of gives you time to, you know, um, either update it or find an alternative uh, application that will uh, work in 64. Um, stay tuned for the end of the uh, video as well. We're going to do a quick screencast how to uh, find out which applications are 32-bit and 64. So uh, that's going to be the end of the video. Now, it's not something new. They also did this with their iOS for uh, iPhones and iPads um, with iOS 11, and uh, which is now 64-bit apps only. Now, usually they do this for two reasons. Uh, for one, um, I believe it's for battery life because actually running a 32-bit application in a 64-bit operating system is going to use more battery life because it's kind of has to do some converting there uh, on the fly. Uh, second reason is they simply have a different business model where uh, once the software hardware gets uh, at a certain age that they simply stop supporting it. Uh, which is different, uh, much different than, let's say, Microsoft, which re uh, re definitely relies on backward compatibility. There's a pros and cons uh, for and against this. Um, it's simply beyond the scope of this um, uh, video. But uh, if you check out some of my other videos, I talk about this uh, quite often. Now, there, there could be... Uh, specific reasons why they do this with their desktop operating systems and also for laptops. Uh, primarily, if we look into the why they did it for iOS 11, uh, it could be a battery life issue as well, with at least with laptops. Uh, but then again, that goes back to the, the way they do, do things with their business model. Because um, I think over time, really, if you do have backward compatibility, it does tend to get very bloated. And, and uh, the way things operate, it just is not very efficient. And I think uh, Apple has taken a different approach uh, to be uh, lean, mean, uh, uh, get more performance. I think really Apple tends to get more performance out of their software hardware solutions rather than Microsoft. It's really hard for Microsoft to do this anyway because there's simply so much hardware out there. And I, I do admit at times it's very frustrating in, in many sides for myself because then, you know, I lose support for older hardware and, and operating systems. Uh, often you can only upgrade the operating system so much on older Apple hardware. But just the way things go and uh, uh, give me your thoughts on this. Uh, do you have some older devices that can lose 32-bit uh, uh support uh let me know until then uh thanks for watching now if you're not sure exactly which <clears throat> applications are 32-bit or uh 64-bit you can actually go to uh, uh, about this mac and then uh, system report and uh from there uh go down to software and applications now this might take uh a couple of minutes because it's actually searching through all the installed applications and from where you what you can see right here is uh, lists all the applications alphabetically and then uh, look at the 64 bit and it'll tell you yes or no and from there you can identify which applications you may have to wait till they either update it to be 64 bit or uh, perhaps use an alternative application uh, if it's a particularly old one that they don't make anymore so uh, I just wanted to uh, update you on uh, finding out before you up 
upgrade to the uh, next Mac OS.